Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Football Wildcard Team for Match Day 3. So it depends on how your team is looking right now and also depends on which other chips you've used. Um, not, not any other chips, I mean, we only have the Limitless chip. But um, if you've already used your Limitless chip um, before in Match Day 2, maybe the strategy is a bit different for Match Day um, or if you're playing your wildcard in Match Day 3 because you kind of have to target Match Day 3, 4 and 5 and maybe... Keep match day six a bit in mind as well. So in terms of that, I'm saying if a team has a good fixture in match day three and you feel like they have a tougher way fixed in match day four and match day five, then maybe don't triple up on them. Um, but if you still have your limitless chip and you still have your wildcard and you're planning to play wildcard right now, you can just pretty much target match day three and four. Um, then you can use a limitless in match day five or six. So it depends on how your team is looking and which uh, if you already use your limitless. But this is the best team for match day um, three. I've looked at match day four. I've also looked at match day five a bit, and um, I've taken all that into consideration. So let's get straight into it. Champions League football is back. Real football is back. International football is done. Real Champions League football is back. So let's get straight into it. I try to balance it out. And uh, let's start with um, the goalkeepers. So the goalkeepers, um, I have gone with um, some of Inter Milan. Uh, I have taken a look at their defenders, the goalkeepers, but the players that they want to get in this wildcard team are pretty uh, are expensive, most of them. Like if you want the likes of Haaland, you, you have to go for cheaper goalkeepers. If you want to go without Haaland, which is a very um, a big risk because he's owned by almost 70%, then you can um, you can go for more expensive goalkeepers like Ederson or Oblak or all those guys. But for this one, I have gone for Jan Sommer. Inter Milan are playing against Salzburg um, home and away. Um, I think um, Inter Milan very good defensively as always. Um, they've only considered one, one goal so far in the Champions League. They kept a clean sheet against Benfica. Um, so I've gone for the Inter Milan goalkeeper at 4.5. I think that is a steal, as you can see, is owned by 28%. And there is a reason for that. Very cheap way to go into um, into that team um, to get a defender from um, Inter Milan. My second goalkeeper, I have gone for Blasic of Leipzig, mainly because of the upcoming fixtures for um for them, um, the next two fixtures, um, Blasic. So he does have um, Red Star Belgrade home and away, and I think those are very um, two very good fixtures. After that, he will have Man steer away from home, a tougher fixture. But even in that one, depending on which other goalkeeper you're cheating him with, and um, also in terms of save points, he can still get you save points. And by the time you get to that point, if you have a limitless chip, you might be playing a limitless on that match day so you can take him out. Or if you don't have a limitless chip, you'll still have like two subs that you, if you feel like you need to change your goalkeeper, you can change it then. So Blaswich is my second goalkeeper. I think 4.5, two 4.5 um, million goalkeepers is a good way to save um, the money. And as you can see for dates, one is playing on the 24th, one is playing on the 25th. And in the other, in match day four as well, obviously one is going to play on the Tuesday and one is going to play on the Wednesday. So those are the goalkeepers I've picked for this World Cup draft for match day three, also taking into consideration match day four. Um, and yeah, Inter Milan, basically the best defensive team in the Champions League since last season and also this season. And Blaswich, um, Leipzig, good fixture in match day three and also four. Next up, let's go to the defenders. So the defenders as well, I have gone for a few um, expensive defenders. Um, you have to because, um, um, I mean, there's some of them that are really good attacking-wise in terms of ball recovery, so I've taken into consideration all that. And the first pick I have gone for in terms of defenders is Joao Cancelo. He's currently selected Selected by 42%. Um, 6 million is what it's going to cost you. But believe me, he's worth every single penny of that. So far, Barcelona have not considered a goal in the Champions League. Two games, two clean sheets. And for Cancelo, the ball recoveries are active actually crazy he's picked up 12 ball recoveries so far in the two games um and i didn't actually expect them to go to a support and keep a clean sheet so that is a very very good result and next up for barcelona shakta home and away um and even after that they will have royal on top again and they'll have fc port at home so i think cancel is one that um you can have in your team and keep him until the end of um the group stages or any other barcelona player so that is my first pick defensively um the next one i have gone for um another leipzig um player I think it's 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 good because they're playing Red Star Belgrade and they're playing on the first day um on that um on match day three. So I think if they don't keep a clean sheet, it's not the end of the world. You can always go for um you can always replace them. And I think um I don't I can't see Red Star Belgrade scoring two or three goals against Leipzig and for it to be a disaster. So in match day one, I went for two defenders from Leipzig. They didn't keep a clean sheet, but Rom assisted and also um the other defender that I had, and Hendricks um assisted. So it could very easily be 
a clean sheet for them and then he gets six um, to eight points and if Rome gets a, um, an assist or something an attacking return he takes the free kicks he takes the corners you can be um very very um very happy after match day three so david drum is going to cost you 4.5 million uh the next defender i have gone for is um an arsenal defender um I've really considered not going for one because I think Sevilla is going to be a very tough fixture away. But after that, as I said, especially if you play the limitless, you have to have at least one Arsenal player, one Barcelona player, or maybe even two Man City players as well, because you're also looking at match day five, the fixtures that they have. And after this Sevilla game away from home, Arsenal have Sevilla at home and um, Lons at home. And I can see maybe a clean sheet or two in that one. Um, so I've gone for Saliba at 5.5 million. You can always go for Ben White. You can always go for Gabriel. But Saliba, he's picked up 14 ball recoveries so far. Yes, even two more than um, Cancelo, more than him. So absolutely crazy. So that is why I've picked Saliba. And um, he's probably always going to start as we saw Ben White was rotated in the last um, match day against um, Lon. So that can happen. Zinchenko can be rotated for Tomiyasu anytime as well. And Gabriel, maybe Kivio can come on anytime. But I think Saliba is um, a definite start in um at least for the next two three games maybe match the six if arsenal is through he could be rested um next up uh just as i said about um arsenal man still the same even if you feel like one game there is tougher i don't think so young boys they have uh, um red star belgrade just like leipzig as well same group and the last time they played leipzig they scored three goals so i can see at least two clean sheets there man still have not yet kept a clean sheet so far um i think they won 3-1 in the second game i think they considered again i def they definitely considered against red star belgrade i think they considered against leipzig as well i think i saw penda scoring so man still have considered in both games no clean sheet so far but i can't i can't see them finishing the whole group without um keeping any clean sheet so i have gone for kyle walker 5.5 uh, million i think there's a couple of clean sheets there he might be rested someday. Um, I, I can't see him playing all the games, but hopefully the games that he plays, he can keep a clean sheet and get an attacking return. And finally, the last def defender I've gone for, Atletico Madrid. I've gone for Molina. Two games so far this season, he's kept two clean sheets. I had him in my limitless team last time. He didn't keep a clean sheet. Atletico Madrid have been conceding a few goals in the Champions League, but in terms of attacking, he got 11 points so far this season, so that is a good return. So... Um, let me know what you make of this defense in terms of a wildcard, a Barcelona defender, a Leipzig defender, an Arsenal defender, Man City defender, and also an Atletico Madrid defender. Um, next up, let's go to um, the midfielders. Uh, midfielders, again, there's one player that you have to have before you even start discussing anything. You know his name. His name is, um, why is he? Why do they even have to take him so far down? Bellingham. You have to have Bellingham in your team. So far this season, he's picked up man of the match, I think, against Atletico Bilbao. He picked up man of the match against Osasuna in the Champions League. He's picked up man of the match against Union Berlin and against Napoli. Two games. International um, break, he, he got the man of the match as well in the last game for England. And that play of the match, those extra three points can be really decisive. So he's a player who so far this season in club football and international football, I think he has like eight man of the match awards or maybe even more than that, which is absolutely crazy. So that is almost a guaranteed three points to go alongside a guaranteed two points for him playing 60 minutes plus. So um, and on top of that, he's already scored two goals and he's already gotten an assist so far in the Champions League this season. Plus eight ball recovery so this is an all-round player um his price has already gone up for seven from 7.5 i'm guessing many of you already had him um but if he didn't and you're trying to get him in you're going to have to pay 0 0.1 million more which is going to take um which um he's totally 7.6 million right now so bellingham 7.6 million um so you have to have him in your team before you're even debating anything else the next one i've gone for barcelona player um, because I think Barcelona have those good fixtures against Shakhtar home and away. And um, I've looked at their midfielders because they are forwards. Yes, you can go for Lewandowski and Joao Felix, both of them. But that um, also kind of makes you not go for like someone like a Gabriel Jesus or my United striker or Harry Kane for Bayern Munich or Haaland for Man City. So if you go for two Barcelona strikers, you're having to um, go without one of those um, top strikers. So I've gone for Gundua, um, 16 points so far this season. He's, uh, he assisted in both games. He picked up all the match in the last match as well against FC Porter. He's currently selected by 8%. So good, very, very good. He can take a few free kicks as well. Um, he used to take a few penalties at Man City. I'm not sure he's going to take um, any of Barcelona, but who knows? He might end up taking um one or two if they get or maybe one two is a bit of a stretch so good one at eight million i think is a good price next midfielder i have 
have gone for is um Bayern Munich. Um Bayern Munich, they, they have no problem scoring goals. Clean sheet is the problem. So if you have the likes of Alfonso Davis and those guys, clean sheets seem to be a problem. But in terms of scoring, no problem at all. They scored four against um against Man United and they scored two against Copenhagen. I expected more, but next up they have um Galatasaray away from home. They have Galatasaray at home and then they'll also have Copenhagen at home. Um in match day two, the ones who played limitless like myself, it didn't work out because they didn't really um contribute. But he's already gone up in price as well, 9.1 million. But uh, like goals are no problem for Bayern Munich and Galatas, right? The last home game they considered twice against Copenhagen and they also considered twice against Man United. So Galatas don't really keep clean sheets. So you can see Sunny there, even if Galatas already get a draw, it could be like 2 2. So those are the first two midfielders I've picked. Next up, um, let's go to FC Porto also, mainly because of fixtures and the way he performed in match day one i have gone for galeno at 6.6 million this allows you to save um money match day one he was absolutely um terrific um he picked up the 21 points that he's picked up this uh, most of them came in match day uh <laughs> match day one uh when um they beat um um Shakhtar three one away from home he got an assist he scored two goals he got play of the match and then he only got two points against Barcelona so I didn't expect him to get a lot against Barcelona but now they have Royal and Trap twice so I think that is a good price to pay for um someone who's um going to play Royal and Trap twice Galeno is a bit of a differential as well only selected by six percent and the next one is definitely a differential so Newcastle, surprisingly, many people had predicted them to finish bottom of their group, but they're looking good. So um, they might not keep clean sheets, a lot of them, but um, Dortmund have not scored a lot in the Champions League so far this, and I think they've only scored one, if I'm not wrong. Um, you have to, I think you have to go for um, a player from from Newcastle, either a defender like Trippi or midfielder or Isaac up front, or maybe their goalkeeper. But I think in this one, I have gone for, um, where is he, where is he, where is he? Gordon, 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 Gordon. They don't want me to find Gordon. Let me just search for him here. Gordon. So Gordon is going to cost you, it's only going to cost you 5.5 million. And that allows you to have like the big strikers up front. So Newcastle's next game is Dortmund at home and then Dortmund away. I can easily see out of those two games, Newcastle scoring at least um, three goals and not be surprised. Um, I can see them scoring at least two at home and maybe one away from home. So Gordon could be involved. And since Burns is out injured, um, Gordon will start at least one of those games and he could return. Um, in match day one, he performed well. Um, was it match day one or two? Match day one, the uh, Miss Milan kept a clean sheet against them, but match day two against PSG, he played well. So those are the five midfielders I've picked on a wild card. Um, by the way, this team, um, at the end, is you're only going to remain at 0 0.1 million, depending. If you already had the likes of Bellingham, you could have like 0 0.2 million, 0 0.3 million if you already had some of these players who've gone up in price. Up front, I know he hasn't really performed recently, but... I can't go without him, Marling Haaland. Or I shouldn't go without him because remember he's playing young boys twice next up now. So um, he's he's not really performed so far in the Champions League this season. He's gone on a, like two game drought in the Premier League. It, it's due and he cannot finish the group without um, at least one hat-trick. Believe me, he's going to get a hat-trick somewhere and you have to be there um, for it. So Haaland, 11.5 million, a lot to pay. I mean, if you don't go without, uh, if you don't go with, um, with Haaland, then you're going to save a lot of money. Like you can go for players like Vinicius Junior instead and still have 0 0.5 million. You can maybe go for more expensive midfielders that you want, maybe the likes of Odegaard and players like that. So Arling Haaland up front. I will talk about the Arsenal forward players later. Uh, next striker, I think I'm going to go for the Man United um, striker. I'm impressed so far with him in the Champions League. He scored in both games and he's only going to cost you 7 million now. In that position, you can al always go for Alvarez as well because it's around the same price and um, it's like um, if Haaland doesn't score, Alvarez will score. But um, Hoyland, two goals. Um, he scored against Bayern Munich. He scored against um, Copenhagen, um, against um, Galatasaray. And next up, they have Copenhagen twice. So I think Hoyland is um, a decent shout. Uh, many people wouldn't want to go for Man United players, but if you want to go for one, I think 7 million is not too much to pay for that so the last track i have gone for is barcelona also because of the fixture just like i spoke about um with um cancelo and that is um joao felix at 8.1 million so if you put all this team together you're going to have like 0 0.1 million remaining or if you already had those players in caught the price that rises then you're going to have like 0 0.3 million um most so for that 0 0.1 million 
you can always you can make some changes you can always take out um if you don't want gunduan you can take out gunduan and molina for example and bring in um either odega or saka from arsenal and then a 4.5 million defender if you want one of the attacking players from arsenal um you can always go direct from sunny to odega if you prefer the arsenal midfielder there's a couple of changes you could do if you didn't want um like and two like two atletico madrid players yeah go for two like one atletico madrid player if you don't want hoyland you can always go for alvarez so depending on how you're seeing it hurricane is also uh, also an option up front but you're going to have to look for money elsewhere unless you take out felix and then downgrade your defenders and midfielders it's very difficult if you want to have Haaland, bellingham kane son it's very difficult to have all of them plus have all um the likes of um canceling the team it's very very difficult so that is the um wild card team for match day three let me know what you make of that are you going to go for any of these players are you playing your wild card let me know in the comment section thank you for watching and i'll catch up with you on the next one